All right, yo, what's going on, everybody? It's another episode for our podcast, Paul Jones Podcast. I am B, Paul Jones, and it's Nelson, B. Haskin, and we are here today. What's up, man? <laughs> what's going on, brother? How you doing? Yeah, I'm good, man. What about you? Man, you know, working hard, man. Trying to keep it, keep, trying to keep it together. That's what that's kind of what life is about at this point, you know, just figuring it out and keeping it together, man. Thanks. Um, so yeah, today's gonna be kind of a fairly serious episode. Uh, the topic is definitely serious, but uh, we ain't gonna be like super weighty about it, or at least that's not the intention. But if you go there, go there, but whatever. Um, yeah, today we're gonna be talking about uh, players' mental health. Um, in the past four or five years, it kind of became more of a headline topic, uh, more of a um, point of contact for a lot of people to talk about, and it's become more and more acceptable to talk about. But uh, I don't, me personally, I never feel like people really attack it the way it should be attacked and talked about, or they they go that direction, but they don't go deep enough. They kind of stay very shallow about it. And I don't know if it's the platform. I don't know if they don't have the opportunity. I don't know what it is, but they don't go deep enough into it, especially on a higher platform. So today, uh, we're going to selfishly make that our point to you know talk about it and go a little bit, a little bit deeper. That's what this podcast is about. Let people go shallow with a lot of stuff, and they don't go deep enough into it. So that's what we're going to do today. So um, to start off with, man, like what is uh not necessarily your relationship like personally but what is like your mindset when it comes to you know mental health and like specifically when it comes to athletes or the pro players or whatever like what is that that relationship for you when it comes to mental health uh for me uh when i think about mental health i think i really just think about like i don't know if this is a right or wrong way to think about it but when i think about mental health I really think of it as like, how close are you to like breaking down, like mentally? Mm. Like that's kind of how I feel about it. Cause like, you know, in in life, you know, not to get too serious, but <laughs> but like, I feel like every day, you know, like life is hard. Like don't don't matter who you is, and you know it's hard to be an athlete in his own way. So, but uh, so I look at it as if like. The more mentally strong you are, the more things you can get to. And that's kind of what we prepare for. It's like life ain't going to like, oh, you know, we hope life get easier over time or easier than it is right now. And, and, you know, just hope that things get better. We always hoping like things get better. We work hard for for things to be better. But you you try to prepare for if things don't or if things get worse that you can handle. it. And that's kind of what life is. And so that's kind of how I look at it, like especially being an athlete is like, you know, we hope we win games. We hope, you know, you hope you stay healthy. You hope you win games. You hope you, you like your teammates. You hope you work well together. You hope you like your coaches. Because, you know, those are things you can't control. Like, who's on this team? Who's coaching you? How, like, you, I mean, I guess in a way you control how many games you win, but you can't control how good the team is. You can only control how good you are or how good you get. So, if, you know, you can't really control how many games you win. And, you know, things like that. And those kind of weigh on your mental health. So, like, outside, when you play a sport, your mental health is tied in deeply with that sport. If you care about it, let's say that. If you really care about it and love the sport that you play in the way I love basketball, your feelings tied into it. You can't even help it. So, mm-hmm. like, we lose games, I'm, I'm upset. I don't want to talk. And, like, my, my sister coach says, some, says this all the time. He said, if it don't hurt you, it don't mean nothing to you. Like it should hurt you. It should hurt you to lose. It should hurt you to not perform to your to the best of your ability. It should hurt to like not do enough to win the game. Like it's supposed to hurt, but the the main thing about it, and and this this is something that basketball has taught me, uh, that I take in life. You you should never be too high, and you should never be too low. You just need to be able to maintain. Like, you need to stay somewhere in the middle. When we win, or if we winning, we're going on a winning streak, whatever. Don't ever get too hot because you know somebody can always knock you off. And if you're losing or you're going to lose a streak, 
Don't ever get too low because we it's still gonna be another one. It's another game. You gotta focus on the next one. That game, the games you lost, that that last game we lost, them last three games we lost, them last five games we lost. That's over. Nothing we can do about it now. You know, take take that on the chin and go into the next one and try to get and try to end the streak. And so that's the main thing. Just never get too high, never get too low. And that's how you want to be mentally in all things. Like when things get hard for, for you and whatever you do at your job, at your household, you know, whatever you do in your daily life, don't ever get too low to where you start to feel like you're going to give up, don't to feel like, oh, man, there's nothing I can really do, or, like, you start feeling overwhelmed. Like, don't, don't, you got to learn to not let yourself get too low. And that's kind of, it took me some years to do that, really, because I mm -hmm. used to get too low. Like, I used to be bad about that. So that's kind of my relationship with it as far as sports goes, at least as far as being an athlete. Like, never get too high, never get too low. Like, it's supposed to hurt, but just never let it – don't let it kill you. Let's say that. Mm. It's supposed to hurt you, but don't let it kill you. That's the main thing. Mm. Yeah. Um, to kind of go back to the original point of what mental health – not necessarily relationship, but like kind of like the thought behind it. So I like in mental health just like it is for physical health. So I wouldn't say your definition is wrong. That's what, you know, that's your conception of it. So for me, my conception is just like physical health. So everybody has both. Everybody has a brain and a mind and a mental. You have some level of mental health. Everybody has a body. So you have some level of physical health. And that relationship between you and what that is for you, what is, you know, healthy or unhealthy, is is uh is no one certain thing or one certain point that is all across the board black and white for everybody and so um it's really just about what makes the most sense for you because comparing shoot you to your brother your level of physical health has to be totally different from his because mm -hmm. what you're expected to do with your body is totally different from what he's expected to do with his he ain't expected to go out here and hoop and have uh double doubles every night and turn over down the floor pretty much play the whole game or close to it like the level of physical fitness for your body that you're expected to have is totally different just like for people's mental uh their mental health of what they're expected to do is different from person to person we kind of talked about this, this before uh i can't remember what we were talking about the episode but we was kind of saying talk i think it was about responsibility or something like that and I was kind of saying how, oh, pressure. That's what we're talking about, the pressure. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. So I remember we were joking about, like, the pressure that I feel so different from what my dad feels. So I was like, something <laughs> go wrong with the family or with the house. Ain't nobody looking at me for that pressure. Be like, be what we're going to do. What my dad say, bro? Like, I don't know. What <laughs> my dad said something. He didn't. Well, go see what he said. Then come back to me because I, I ain't got nothing for you right now, bro. Like, that's the, that's the man with that. Right. And so... To stick with that uh picture my dad's mental health his situation totally different from mine because while he was raised in the area he was brought up in and we had to deal with totally from me in my area what i'm growing what i have to deal with uh so it's different from person to person of what that relationship means and what you have to go to and what you're dealing with and everything so that's why i say um that's such a it's literally like that's a lot of people won't get this but it's literally such a great area. Like I'm pretty sure, like eight percent of people don't get what I just said right there. It's kind of funny, but it's not. Funny, but it's funny. But uh, <laughs> that was kind of a nerd thing. But whatever. Uh, yeah, it's such it. a great. It's. it's <laughs> hey, I'm with but you. Yeah, a, I'm here. <laughs> but yeah, it's such a great area thing that is tough. That's why it's so tough to talk about because you can't really. There's nothing you can say. No, there's nothing you can see to really just point to and be like, oh, okay, that's the issue. You know what I mean? Like, we can see, like, Clay Thompson hurts ACL. Well, he's definitely not running the same. Something's wrong. Sometimes you can kind of see that somebody's not 100% mentally, but it's somewhat easier to hide it. So everybody's relationship with it is a little bit different, and that's kind of where part of the issue lies with mental health. Mm. But um, To kind of piggyback off your second point of it to where – with athletes specifically, um, learning how to do two things, learning how to have balance 
and learning how to compartmentalize everything is very important. Something I suck with. And so uh, I can compartmentalize pretty good. My balance is pretty bad. But compartmentalize meaning what happens on the floor stays on the floor. That loss we had stays right there. That win we had stays right there. Learning how to separate yourself sometimes from that thing that happened, which is kind of hard to do when that's their livelihood or that's like a, a, a majority of your life. Like if you at this point, basketball, thing there is life for you. That's consuming a lot of your time. Right. And learning how to kind of separate yourself from that and have something. That's why I emphasize have something outside of basketball to do because you can't live and die by it 24-7. So compartmentalize and separate yourself from that. That's number one. And that ties into balance to where balance is different for everybody. So for me, balance might be 60% basketball, 40% outside of it. For you, it might be 80% and 20%. You felt you feel good doing that. But I think people have to figure out what makes sense for them to where they get the they even out to where it makes sense to where they're not going crazy. Like you said, not too high to low basketball going this way. And they're not going to how slow basketball goes that way. You're able to stay even because you have a balance for you. So that's kind of where I see it uh, working for people to where, yeah, it's a difficult thing, but like, can you find what works for you? So that's why I kind of feel like the whole mental health thing plays a role into it. Yeah, I, I definitely hear that because like that reminds me kind of what, um, what Chris Paul was talking about the bubble and you know how hard it was to play in the bubble in 2020 and stuff. And uh, he was saying, you know, usually, like, usually in in regular season or whatever, like, when you play, you take the player hat off and you put dad hat on, like you dad when you get home and stuff. I remember you talking about that, like you yeah. can leave, like you kind of can leave basketball at the door, come home to your family, play with your kids, and you know leave that stuff behind. And you know, yeah, it affects you, but you know, like you come home, your kids, your kids might not even know you had like they know you had a game, but like they don't really care, like they just know daddy yeah. home. That's how it is for them. And so, like, you kind of can leave basketball at the door. And in the bubble, they couldn't really do that. So, it was like they was a player all the time, 24-7. Like, they with the team. They, they like, at the arena, like, at the, the whatever, you know, the facility, 24-7, never going home, never going to their family. So, um, well, I have an interesting story about this, like, compartments and co- compartments, <laughs> compartmentalizing. Uh, things because I'm not good with it either, like as far as basketball and stuff goes. So, uh, I'm pretty sure I'd mention this if not on here, like not on the podcast. I'm pretty sure I'd, I'd have mentioned it to you before. But, mm-hmm. uh, my freshman year in, in Juco playing for Bevel State, and uh, the Miguel Williams interview just dropped, uh, as we were recording it, it, it dropped a while ago, but uh. He, he mentioned it too, where uh, we had lost a point guard, our star point guard, Javon Duncan, right, like at Christmas break. He, he had uh, toys, like he tore a couple things in his knee, like toys, knee up, whatever. So he was out for the rest of the season. And so uh, then we had lost a couple guys to grades. So we really lost, every, like almost everybody that played point guard. And we had one legit point guard and then um, like nobody else. Like everybody, else, nobody else played that position for real. And like, you know, Javon was very valuable the way he played defense, outlet it, you know, just played his role so well. He, and um, and his absence kind of messed us up like badly. And then you know, not even having like backups for the backup messed us up even more. So the rotation was just bad. But anyway, we come out of Christmas, Christmas break without him. I think we won the first game, lost the second one, won the next one, and then we lost eight straight games. Mm. Out for Christmas. Eight straight conference games at that. All of them conference games. Lost eight straight. And, man, I'll never forget. (laughs) In the middle of the stretch of losing, right, and I'm playing my heart out because I'm playing a lot of minutes, you know, doing everything I can, like, with him being out and, like, his defensive presence gone, my defensive presence was kind of needed even more. And I'm playing a lot – I'm playing, like, a lot of minutes, 30-plus. And, you know, I'm just a freshman. This is my first college season. I remember I had a girlfriend at the time, right? But um, 
she didn't go to the same school as I did. So, you know, we was on the phone and stuff every night or whatever. I was like, boy, in the stretch of losing these games, B, I'm not ashamed to tell you, I was the worst boyfriend. Like, the worst boyfriend ever. Like, <laughs> she would say things or do something that might have been, like, a little annoying or, like, a little irritating. And I'm, like, mad. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would get hot, like, quick. Like, my, my patience was gone. Like, I had very little patience. And, like, I would just get irritable very fast. Because of basketball, though, because I'm always tired. And on top of being tired, are we losing? And I'm, I feel like I'm playing my heart out. Like, I'm trying my best to win. We losing consistently. So, that was just weighing on me so bad. Because it's like a mix of, like, emotions of, like, I'm not doing enough and I'm doing everything I can. So, like, it was like a – it's an internal struggle, really, when you're in that that that, strength, that stronghold of, like, I'm doing everything I can and I'm not doing enough. Mm -hmm. So, that's just a – like, it's a bad feeling. And so, man, I remember one day I told her, like, I, I, remember, <laughs> I remember one day I, I said something to her, like, I said something mean to her, something like that. I was, like – the same thing I said. And I told her later on in the day, I was like, hey, like, I'm sorry about, like, how I've been recently. Like, I apologize. Like, like from the bottom of my heart, I apologize. I know, like, lately, I've been just, like, very, like, irritable and, like, very short with you. Like, like I'm sorry because, like, you don't deserve it and it ain't nothing you did. All that. Like, I had to tell her because I was like, I, I had to really look at myself like, I don't know what I did or said. I know it wasn't, like, nothing, like, too crazy. But, like, I don't remember what I did or said. But I was like, bro, what am I doing? Like, why am I being so, like, mean? Like, why? <laughs> this not me. Like, she didn't deserve that, whatever it was. So now I'm looking at myself like, I'm tripping. Like, I had to check myself because nobody was going to check me. And her being herself, she was like, what? God bless her soul. Because she, she never, like, came at me, like, like on some – I don't know who you talking to or you hey, you lost your mind or you need to show me some more respect, this and this and this. And she would have been completely within her rights to do that. Like, to mm. be real, she would have been completely within her rights. She never came at me that way because she knew. Because, like, I would come home every night at the games. Like, yeah, we lost again. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like I'll come home and be like, yeah, we lost. How you think you played? Like, I did. All right. Like, I had this and this and this. But, like, we just ain't do this and we ain't do that. We ain't play no defense. This went wrong. This went wrong. Like, uh, she hearing me talk about the games every night, knowing we losing. And then, like, so she understand why I'm being, like, the way I am, why I'm not, like, myself. So she realized mm. why I even realized it. And so when I had apologized to her, she said, yeah, uh, I realize, you know, things not really going your way right now and stuff. But, like, like you make, sometimes you make me feel like I didn't did something wrong or, like, I, maybe I said the wrong thing. And I was like, no, no. Like, no, nah, I feel bad because I'm like, no, because you didn't do nothing wrong. <laughs> you yeah. didn't do nothing wrong. It's just me. Like, it's just, like, I'm sorry. I had to very, like, seriously apologize to her because I was tripping. But, I wasn't, like you said, like, it was, like, the car compartmentalizing part of things. Like, I could not leave basketball at the door. Like, the losing and, like, the, the trying as hard as I was trying and the minutes I was playing and how tired I was, it just was so hard to deal with mentally to, like, take that home and then talk to her, like, everything okay. Because she, like, like same thing with the kids. Like, like Chris Paul said, you come home to your kids. Your kids don't really – you know, they know you had a game, but they just care like you at home. That's all they really care about. That's all she cared about. I come home and call her because she ain't talked to me in a while because we've been playing. So, like, she's just happy that I'm on the phone. And I'll get on the phone and I'm mad because we just lost. I couldn't leave it on. I couldn't leave it where it was at. I couldn't leave that on the court and come home and, like, just be her boyfriend. And so, I, I'm mad. Like, I, I had to really, like, check myself. Come out, like, I realize it now that my mental health was not in the best place, like, mm -hmm. at that point in time with the things that was going on. So it's just one of the things, like, you got to really find the balance. Like, the balance is important because if you get too low, like, I got too low in them moments to where I wasn't mm -hmm. myself. And that's the re that's the main thing. I wasn't myself because I got too low in, those, in that moment. And so 
it's just something you kind of got to learn to deal with. And I'm better about that now. Like, we was losing games last year and stuff that, like, you know, you take a couple of L's, you lose a couple of tough ones. And I, I've really learned myself more. I know, like, oh, okay, like, I'm upset. It's best if I, like, just go to bed or whatever. Like, I tell – if I'm talking to somebody, like, the girl I'm with, whatever, anybody around me, I might tell them, like, hey, you know, I don't really feel like talking. I think I'm going to just go to bed. Because it's better for me to just do that than talk to you or be around you and be, like, irritable and not myself or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, like, hey, you know, took a t- tough loss. You know, I think I'm going to just go to sleep. I'm going to go to bed. I'll get up with you tomorrow. So that's kind of what I do now. So that's kind of how I handle it. Then I wake up tomorrow and I, I look at it like, all right, it's a fresh start. Let's like, you know, that's in the past. We got to move on. Got another game in a couple of days. So yeah, that's how I approach it now. Wait, oh, oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on real quick. I got, a, I just got a quick question for you. All right, okay, look, 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 look. look. So where does you go? Like, what are you going after right now in your life? Right? Are you looking to make the team? Okay, you didn't make the team, but you're looking to figure out how to make the team coming up, or maybe you made the team. But you're on the bench, you're not playing like you want to. Or maybe you're playing a little bit like you want to, but you're not a starter. Or you're not finishing the games like you want to. Or maybe you're the player, but you're just, you're just not quite where you want to be as far as recognizing your county or maybe your conference or your state, whatever you're trying to be recognized at. Um, whatever your goal is, I want you to forget about that. Like, put it like, it, put it on the board or something, write it down in your phone and just put it somewhere and tuck it away. I want you to take that goal Throw it over there, and now I want to try a new one, right? I want to try P R O G R E S S. Progress. I want you to make progress your goal. Okay, so take that big goal that you have now, and take it, put it in your back pocket, and just figure out how to make progress and work towards that goal. Because sometimes we get so caught up on the goal of the the end goal where we want to be that we don't keep working forward. And looking, working towards that goal like we should be. So every day I want you to wake up and figure out how to just make progress. How can I be better today than I was yesterday? It's the new tomorrow. The same as that thing. Figure out how can I be better today than I was yesterday. It doesn't matter how good you are or what you did yesterday. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Your goal today is to make progress be better than you was yesterday. And so just if you need, if you need a reminder about that, all I want you to do is to have a reminder. I want you to go ahead and get one of these hoodies. Or you get you a T-shirt. I got, I got a couple options for you. So get you a hoodie or a T-shirt just, just to remind yourself, just to keep it as a as a memento. You'd be like, man, today's goal is to make progress. My only goal is to make progress. Progress is the only goal. So if that fits you and you feel like you need to make progress to be your goal, go ahead and hit the link in the description below and invest into yourself. Invest into that reminder. Treat it like an alarm clock to remind you that you need to make progress. Make sure that you're focused and being intentional about the work that you have today. So progress is the only goal. Uh, hit the description below to invest into yourself. It's not about me. Investing into yourself to remind yourself that progress is my goal for today. So that, that's enough for me, man. I hope I didn't interrupt you. Get back to the episode. Um, I can relate to the, to the whole girlfriend thing, bro. Because not from the athlete side, but still from like the relationship side. I ain't going to make this a whole relationship thing. It's not from the direction let's go. Yeah, but, um, I had a pocket where I was struggling with stuff, and it was more of a life thing. But even with that, you still have to learn to like even compartmentalize life problems when it comes to people around you and the people in your life, because it's not a hundred percent fair to them that one thing affects every single thing. Now, you know, so man, the girl I was with when I was in school, uh, bro, when I tell you, bro, I appreciate her so much because like just like you were saying like she kind of understood what's going on going on and everything and like she kind of like just work with you a little bit when i tell you bro she was like a god sent bro helping me with everything i had going on bro like she was like super patient and just understanding and stuff and i was just like what like you know what i mean it, it was just like it was, it was like looking back at it bro, that's exactly what i needed to that point you feel me like it was right it was perfect timing bro like i couldn't have playing that myself of like dealing with all that you feel me so like i will forever appreciate it. like bro when i tell you bro like forever like she probably don't even fully understand or know but like forever appreciate that man but uh, man, it's something women good at really just being there for you in times like that especially as a man when you get low 
Like, like I said, we're not going to go in a relationship <laughs> direction with it. But so that's something women really like good at. Like, you get low, a good woman to like be like the thing you need to bounce back. Like, mm-hmm. like she can really help you like stay like keep, she'll keep you up. Like, because you be about yeah. to fall over. <laughs> But, yeah, man, and, and that's just something I'm kind of like trying to recapture in a sense. You know what I mean? Like finding that help of not necessarily a girlfriend, but it's like a homegirl around that can just be like, "Yo, I got you, bro." Like I understand. And, you know, you know, when you had that, it kind of throw you off. And so it's just, it's just, uh, it's needed balance, bro. Like what I'm telling you, bro. Like women are amazing. Oh man, bro. I could literally go on, on a whole rant and like be on a sofa box about how dope women are, man. But we, I'm not finna, <laughs> finna go back to mental health. But um, kind of like how you were saying with uh, you, you weren't able to be aware of your own situation, but she was able to see it before you were. It's kind of like that with mental health a lot for a lot of people. So um, it's sort of like the injury that you can't see. And other people can't fully see what's going on, too. So, like, if you're in a certain place and you're just kind of acting different or weird or strange, sometimes that's your mental health. And other people don't fully know or understand what's going on. And because of that, they just see Nelson acting different. But because she knows you and she's been around you and because of your situation, oh, Nelson's losing games. That's why he's acting like this. But sometimes non-athlete people people don't fully understand of what's going on because life seems great. You seem kind of like a pro place. You're making so much money. You're on TV. You got endorsement. You got deals. Um, Kevin Love, you're an all-star. You're winning the you, games. You're in a championship. DeMar DeRozan, you're an all-star. You in the playoffs every year. You got this and that going on. But it's something else that you don't see or don't know about that I have the issue of dealing with. Mm. But an injury, you can see an injury, like a physical injury. You can see that to where Somebody wrote the ankle. Ooh, that's odd. Uh, I'm sorry. How long you out? A month. I understand, brother. You will. If somebody come at you, hey, man, I'm, I'm, I ain't feeling myself, man. And say you don't even fully know what it is, but you're depressed or you got anxiety or whatever, and you can't fully understand or explain what's going on. People would just be like, ah, oh, you all right. Just shake it off. You're just like, oh, I don't know, man. Something ain't exactly right, man. Like, so it's like you imagine you being hurt or your ankle hurt or your knee hurt, and doctors say you fine. Well, not, not, not exclude doctor, but coach be like, man, you all right, man. You like yourself, you all right. Teammates be like, man, Nelson, you straight, bro. What you doing, bro? Come hoop, man. Like, what you, I don't know, man. My knee ain't, ain't, I don't know, bro. Like, it ain't quite there, man. The next thing you know, boom, knee gone. Y'all for the <laughs> season. Like, yo, like, man. everything in my knee tore up. Oh, man, that's tough. I think that's what mental health is to an extent to where you kind of have little little small sort of signs of where you're not yourself, you're not feeling right. You you got there are a lot of symptoms that go on that people don't aren't fully aware of, but then it backs up and when like we just kind of talked about before we recorded, like it hits it hits nine or a ten, and it's like, oh, he oh he oh okay. Now people pay attention and are fully aware of it. Now they got your back. But it's like, bro, my knee was messed up for months and nobody knew. You know, so that's kind of how I see how mental health is to where um, it's, it's it's very difficult to spot. And it's not as easy to talk about sometimes because sometimes you're not fully aware of what's going on to be able to express what's going on. So now if I'm messed up and I can't tell you how or why I messed up, you just look at me crazy because it's like, B, you're not yourself. Like, what's up, man? And it's just like, I don't really know, bro. So that's kind of the weird part of mental health um, that. I feel like especially pro players, but just players in general have to deal with. And then you expect it to still perform on top of that. And I don't think that I don't run go that direction, but um, but it's just weird to deal with, you know what I mean? So mental health is like the injury sometimes that you can't see or fully understand or be able to express because it's it's the unseen, you know, it's the gray area. It's not black and white, it's like the gray area. <laughs> it's the gray area of what's going on that uh People don't fully know or understand. Facts, and, but that's life. Though life is not black and white. Life is gray. Like it's a very like it's different for everybody. And look, number one thing I'll point to, like not point to, but like 
uh, how you say it, like mental health is unseen. The only time we really see it is the drastic, like the mm-hmm. like the end of the spectrum. Like it's it's bad. Like like when like I I point to uh, Isaiah Thomas's situation, not old Isaiah Thomas, but Boston Celtics. 2018, I want to say, or 2017, one of those years. Isaiah yeah. Thomas and the Boston Celtics in the playoffs, and uh, his sister passed away. And you know he was he on an MVP season, like he didn't win MVP, but he was in the MVP running that year. He hooping, and they in the playoffs. His sister passed away, and they like he got to play. And I remember seeing him on the sideline crying and, like, before a playoff game on the sideline crying. His teammates, like, you know, trying to console him. It's bad. And I'm like, that. we think about it then. That's when we got to be like, ah, I know he's going through a rough time. You know, I know it's hard for him, and he got to play and this and this and this. We see that because it's, the like, the drastic end of the spectrum. It's like, oh, we mm-hmm. know he's going through a hard time because we see it. But – like other in situations that's not like that bad that is drastic as somebody passing away close to you or sometimes it is but some situations that's not as drastic as that they might they're not crying on the sideline they're not breaking down on the court they're not like having to have somebody like console them right then and there in, in your face you know what i'm saying like you don't see it they they kind of just like you know it, it's just kind of one of the things where they come in like Hey, you know it is what it is. I gotta try to play, mm-hmm. like, and that, that's that's kind of if we don't see it that bad, we don't think about it. So yeah, that that's yeah. kind of where the pro, the problem lies. It's like, man, guys don't really think about your mental health as a player until it's you down bad, you know, mm-hmm. until you lose somebody or something's really wrong. You like, you it, you don't even think about it until the end, and um. We said this before, but uh, was it was Gilbert Arenas? I think that was like uh, nine times out of ten when the players in the slump or like mm-hmm. not playing well and they, and they got nothing to do with basketball. Yep. like that's true. That's facts. And they got nothing to do with basketball. These guys pros, they know how to hoop. Like yeah, you you know you might have a, you have bad games here and there, but like when guys have slumps and like not playing well for a stretch at a time. Nine times out of ten, it's something that ain't got nothing to do with basketball. Somebody's sick at home. Somebody ain't, you know, things ain't going right at home. Things ain't going right off the court. You know, something's bothering them. Something's getting to them. So uh, that's kind of how it is. We don't, but we don't think about that. We just be like, oh, Steph ain't shooting well. Steph ain't, Steph ain't shooting 30% the last couple games. That's, a, that's what we see. <laughs> that's all we see as, as the fans. But like we never really see the underlying factor of like what could be going on, what could be going on when he leaves the gym, when he get off the court, what's happening. Yeah. So that's the tough. That's the toughest part about it as, when you're a player. Yeah, I think, um, and I think that's kind of tough to really get into because now you you're peering into somebody's personal life. You know what I mean? And that's where I kind of feel like you. Like, where do you draw the line on that? You know what I mean? Because, like, of course, a bad game or two. All right, cool. You're human. Like, whatever. Like, Steph Curry in the finals, bro. Super human. Game one through four, I believe. Average at best. Like, Steph Curry average. I ain't talking about human being average. Steph Curry average. Like, 20 <laughs> points, eight assists. That's, that's not a good game for you, bro. Like, it's average yeah. at best. Then you went back yeah. to super human. Like, okay. That's just that's basketball. That's how the game goes. Now, if Steph Curry had an entire bad series, the series lasts about two weeks, a week and a half. Now you're looking at, yo, what's up with Steph? Like, because at some point, basketball is put to the side. Like you said, you go, you're down, you, it's bound to happen for you to have a bad game or two. That's just, that's just the mathematics and science of basketball. In the 10 game stretch, you're going to have a 10 amazing games. In the next 10 game stretch, you're bound to have one or two of them bad games. It's just, it, you average out at some point. Mm. But when it, it stretches out beyond, a handful of games or something it's beyond skill and preparation even beyond you being tired or something like that because that can kind of work itself out too if you like say you out of shape or whatever that can kind of work itself out too but when it stretches out fairly long it's like yo what's going on like i think it's tough sometimes because 
I don't know if he broke the news or somebody else broke the news about it. But let's say he never came out about that situation. There are a lot of players who, like, if I was if Isaiah Thomas, nobody would know. I'd just be dealing with it, and it'd just be – I would have had a terrible series. Like, just that's just – anybody would be like, oh, Isaiah Thomas, he he choked, or he's not who we thought he was. He's not really MVP level. Bro, I just lost my sister, bro. Like, I didn't – I'm not public about my issues what I deal with. Say mm-hmm. Kawhi Leonard went through a stretch. You don't know what he got going on. Nobody knows Kawhi Leonard for real, for real. Because he's not public. You feel me? So – it's a lot of players who fit more of that category of I'm private about my life. Y'all see me on court, the little snippets y'all get of me walking around the city or whatever, that's that's all you get. <laughs> so if I was in a situation, you wouldn't know what I got going on. And there's, there's hundreds of players like that in the league to where you see me as a player, you see me sponsorships and stuff, you see a little bit, a little bit tiny family, a little bit, a little tiny bit of my family that I allow you to see. Outside of that, bro, you don't know me and what I got going on. You don't know my absolute highs and my absolute lows. So when you don't get that um, that ability to see inside of what the X-ray into his life was going on, it's hard to really judge him and be like, "What's going on?" You know what I mean? And it's up to the I think it's up to the player to allow how much of their personal life that people can get into. Yeah. And so it's like some, that's why sometimes I'm I'm not a huge fan of being so critical on players, even if they have a bad game, bro. Like I, I understand there's a level of uh, perform of uh, professionalism you have to have to come be ready prepared. I understand all this stuff. I get it. I'm I'm big on myself doing that. But it gets to a point to where we're human beings. You feel me? I feel like sometimes the humanity is going from celebrities and athletes and stuff specifically. And so it's like where do you draw that line at between performance and professionalism versus personal life because that both of them bleed into each other if like you said man you losing eight straight games bro that's bleeding into personal life like i don't care who you are bro it's hard to compartmentalize but you win eight straight games oh wife happy kids happy everybody can be happy because nelson good like hey everything good <laughs> everything good so how do you how do you judge players now based off of that because like that's that's literally there's no black or white that at all. It's all gray. So how do you, how can we judge players now, and have that conversation when all of that is like a gray area within itself? You know what I mean. So that's kind of where I've been yeah. thinking about that for a while. You know, like Jordan. Everybody wants to talk about how Jordan had a situation with his dad. His dad, you know, passed and everything. He still came out performing in the finals. You know, uh, Tiger Woods had a situation off the field. Um, you know. Of course, or field, whatever it's called, and he still comes out of play. You know, he lost his dad at some point, still came out of play. Kobe had a situation with Denver and everything, he still came out to play. So, how do you ju- you can't judge play? Those are the goats of goats. Like, we we did our Mount Rushmore of sports and basketball, that stuff, they up there. Mm. But Isaiah Thomas isn't one of those guys. Kawhi Leonard, he's you know, he's great, you know, 75 player all time, all the stuff, but. How do we sit back and judge those guys now when personal life is really the issue and not that? You know what I mean? It's it's a weird slippery slope for me. So I just like that's a, that's a hard question, bro. I really don't know. I, I think the main thing all we could do is fans, because it's like you know we never know what anybody going through, and I think that's important mm-hmm. to know as people. You never know what the person next to you going through. Like even like me and me and B like. Like when we get off this court, you know, we talk outside of this, but like only like what B tell me, I know. You know what I'm saying? So you mm-hmm. never know what people are really going through. And so that's just important. So like I think the main thing is be kind to people, is what I'm trying to say. Like be kind to people because you don't know what they're going through. Like yep. guys playing, they have a bad game, you know, cool, whatever. It's okay to say that, yeah. Hey, Steph went, didn't have it tonight. Bron didn't have it tonight. Whatever, whoever, whoever the player is, like, yeah, he ain't have it tonight. Have a couple bad games, yeah. He's not been playing well. So, uh, he's going. He on a he in a little bit of a slump. He he hasn't been playing well. Like, it, but I think the thing is, as fans, we'll we'll jump. We so quick to not we as in like everybody. Like it's you know, but it's a general media that's so quick to hop on the on Twitter, hop on like hop on the internet period and just. Yeah, so and so has been playing terrible lately. They should bench him. They he they need to lower his minutes. This and this and this. They should play so and so. He better. Like we so quick to do that. 
and you know fans, especially in the wrong city, fans quick, to, hey, he suck, get him out, uh, go, calling guys all types of nicknames, uh, Pandemic P, uh, West Brick, Love Brick, stuff like that, uh, Cupcake, KD, all yeah. type of stuff. You know, we quick to, like, jump on players, like, get on their head. We quick to do that. Mm-hmm. But, like, that's that's the – therein lies the problem. Like, when guys ain't doing the things we want them to do as as athletes, we quick to get on that. We jump mm-hmm. on them. And, like, what's the limit? We not yeah. kind to athletes or, like, really public figures in general. We not kind to them a lot of times when they not doing the things we want them to do or performing the way we want them to perform. And, you know, I sympathize with that as a player because I remember Russ said a while back, he was like, I, I don't want to bring my kids to the games because they got to hear fans calling their daddy uh, West Brick. Like, what, why would I bring my family here? If that's how they treat their daddy, you know, and I I felt that because it's like yeah, like I ain't never been a big Russ fan, but like he don't deserve that. He don't deserve to have his kids here and that. So that's the thing, man. You never know what anybody going through. Not just players, not just basketball players and football players, whatever. People in general, the people at your job, the people on the bus with you, the people that go to school with you, anything. You don't know what people going through, so just be kind to people because, like. You being kind to them might be the only nice thing that happened to them. You don't even know. So just just be kind to people. You don't know what people are going through behind closed doors. So that's the main thing. So when we look at sports, like, just be kind to those athletes. It's okay to state facts. He had a bad game. Yeah. Had a couple bad games. He's in a slump. It's okay to state facts. It's when we jump on people's head that's, that's the problem. Like yeah. calling guys' names, calling them outside their name, anything outside their name, really. Like, you know, giving them all these type of narratives. Mm-hmm. That that's where we that's what we mess up at, I feel like. Man, that's that's pretty on point. Cause I feel like um it's it's I kind of say this on the, the media podcast we had or episode we had, but I'm gonna flip it just a little bit. So when it comes to fans sometimes, it's not a race to be right. It's a race to be the loudest. It, I don't care what I say. I want to be loud and get attention. So I'm going to say the most wildest, outlandish thing possible to where I just want Katie to see. Him. I'm really a fan of Katie, but I'm going to call him Cupcake and a Snake. Or I'm going to say he sucks, whatever, just so I can get a reply. Like, that's sick, bro. Like, why Why can't you just respect him? I understand that doesn't get the most attention and praise. I understand that. But why? Like, what? what is going on that you have to have that? Like, what? Why is that? Why is that your high? You feel me? So it's just weird. But um, like you said, that's why I do respect Stephen A. Sometimes he he's pretty good at being objective to where when we're talking basketball, like the whole thing with him and Westbrook, I'm talking basketball, bro. You're not performing. That's what I'm talking about. You're talking about off the court legacy, the bigger picture. I'm talking about this last game, this last four games, the last 10 games this season. You're not performing. You're Mr. Triple Double MVP. It's down the third. We're not seeing that on the court. That's what I'm talking about. I can respect Stephen. He's one of the few guys to keep it objective and keep it basketball with some people. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole, but he's pretty good with some people keeping it pretty objective. But I feel like other people cross that line and have a personal – it make it it get personal. That's my thing. It gets personal to mm-hmm. where I'm calling this person out on a daily basis. I'm calling this person out. It has nothing to do with it, like we talked about before with haters. We're not talking about basketball here. I'm talking about you. That's two different conversations. I don't like Nelson versus I don't like Nelson the Hooper. Or I don't like how he plays. Two different conversations. You don't like me as a podcaster, but you don't know me as a man. You don't like, might not like me as a trainer, but you don't know me as a man. That's two different conversations you can have. Because uh, I was thinking about this one time, bro. Business me and personal me are almost two completely different people, bro. Like, it's, man. <laughs> it's funny, bro. Like, the way I, I show up on here is... It's me. Don't get me wrong. It is me. But actually, it's like if you saw me in real life, you probably get a glimpse of this. But it's a whole other part of me that people just, you know, I'm just I'm just chilling, bro. Like I'm I'm different. But um, I'm the same way in basketball. You got to be that way sometimes, though. Yeah, it's got to, man, because nobody want if I was if I was like Brian on this podcast, nobody be listening to us, bro. They be listening to you. 
I've been sitting here listening. <laughs> <laughs> Me talking, you just like, yeah. <laughs> yep. No All right. Facts. No two cents here and there, bro. But I have to not necessarily put a character on, but it's, this is the part of me that I have to show. You feel mm-hmm. me? So people have to learn that Steph Curry, the basketball player, is not always Steph Curry, the man. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of guys like Westbrook is probably the perfect example. Just because he's this way on the court does not mean he's like that in his personal life. When he puts the jersey off and puts some regular clothes on, he got a whole clothing brand. When he puts his clothing brand on, that's two different people. I've heard Westbrook is a human being, a real chill dude, real cool. Like, you like to joke and laugh. So mm-hmm. you can't always compare them to people all the time. And uh, kind of going with you, what you were saying earlier about just being kind and being nice. Like, I'm big on that, man. Like, a lot of people say I probably joke and play too much sometimes. But, like, I, I figure out how to make – I'll joke with you and try to make you laugh or something like that because, like you said, that might be the only laugh you get that day, bro. I don't know what you're going through. I have no clue. If I could say something a little goofy or silly or hit with you or something, like just to mess with you and just like make sure you're good, I, I feel good because, like you said, that might be the only laugh you got that day. I don't know what you got going on at home, what's going on at school, what's going on at work with, because, you know, folks my age, we went to school like that, but uh, with work, whatever, man, it's, it's a lot of stuff going on. So uh, sometimes I intentionally seek, seek out to like, Say something stupid or goofy sometimes to make sure people laugh because you're a human being at the end of the day. And I feel like people forget that about athletes and, like you said, celebrities and public figures and stuff. They dehumanize that whole category of people because, one, they're so distant. I don't care how close social media makes it seem. They're still so distant in lifestyle and the attention. Like, I got two followers and you got two million. We're not the same. Like that's that's two different things. And so sometimes I don't even see you as a human being. I see you as a figure for this thing sometimes. And so um, when it comes to fans, not fans, but uh, players specifically, I think we go 2K mode on players sometimes to where I, whatever happened before is irrelevant. I'm talking about right now in this game. I don't care that you hurt. I don't care what happened off the court. I don't care about this. I don't care about that. I, I, Kind of like going into the whole betting thing. I, like, well, I'm not the biggest fan of that. I put money on this game, bro, and you're not performing. I had money that you're going to score 20 points because you didn't score. What's up? I don't care that your foot hurt. Man, go. I need 20, bro. That's, that's my money on the line. Like, <laughs> I don't care your foot hurt. <laughs> I don't care. Your knee hurt. Why, why you want to get hurt this game, man? Dang, bro. Like, out of all the games to get hurt, you want to get hurt this. Like, what? You think I chose this life? Like, I won't. Oh, I'm going to get hurt intentionally. Game 18, the one that you bet money on. You sound like a clown, bro, man. Like, come on, man. But I get it, but it's still stupid. But um, that's the issue that kind of goes on with little players sometimes because you feel like 2K, your foot was hurt. Okay, let me just reset the game and you'll be back to normal. That ain't real life, man. Like, you can you can simulate injuries and stuff. You just skip through or whatever. That's not real life. My foot actually hurts, bro. Like, <laughs> I cannot walk when I'm at home. Off the court, I got a whole life to still deal with, so. I feel like that's the issue, man. We dehumanize the athletes into celebrity figures to where they're not allowed to have a human life and a human experience because we don't see them as a human being. We see them as LeBron James, Steph Curry, KD, the great basketball players, the great celebrity, the wealthy guys, the whoever. And so we take the human part off of it to where, oh, they got money. They should be straight. No, bro, they're human being before all of that. And so we have to be more mindful of that. And he said, just be kind to him, bro. Like, I understand you play bad. Be just, hey, hey, that was a bad game, man. But uh, as the man, I respect you. You know, hope you have a good time. Whatever. <laughs> hey, that'd be hilarious, bro. Somebody like legit. <laughs> Rush, you had a bad game, but I love you and I respect you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. <laughs> that's all, that's the tweet. You tag, you tag and Russell, Russell Westbrook. Westbrook, you play terrible. I don't think you made a shot that didn't hit the rim. I think it was air balls and backboard. But, you know, hope you have a great day. Hope your wife kisses you today. You have a, a lovely evening with your kids. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so hugs, and, <laughs> hugs and kisses. <laughs> your favorite fan. <laughs> Shalom. Shalom. Hey, that's the one, bro. <laughs> hey. I love you. Hey, what's that Kendrick Lamar song that ended like that? I love you, family. <laughs> I can't wait to see you. Shalom. 
<laughs> that's somebody tweet, bro. I'm telling you. Oh my god. That that's the whole you go you scroll through a whole account. That's all you see. Man, I do not like how uh Ray John Rondo played this game. He had so many turnovers and this, this, and that. But I hope you have a great day, uh Rondo. I hope you go home and spend some time with your kids and you get a nice home, warm hug that makes your day brighter. Shalom, my brother. <laughs> Shalom, my brother. I <laughs> see his tags of Chris Paul, John Moran. <laughs> <Ryan>. Every player. <laughs> Every player, bro. Every game. He's like, bro, what is this? That's crazy, but we might need to start. I might make me a burner. <laughs> just do that. <laughs> every every tweet just to start with the tag of a player, every bad game they had. Yep. <laughs> no positive games. No nothing about a good game. I'm gonna end the message positively though. Yep. Like man, that was a terrible game. You went. We had an offer, but uh but you're a winner in life, you know that man. Like you're, you're doing successful in life, man. I hope hope you have a great day. Hope you make some money off the court because you definitely make you didn't earn your money today on the court. Like, bro, are you, are you complimenting me? Or are you like, what are we doing? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> I don't know how to take this tick, a tweet, man, but whatever. <laughs> but, man, so that, that's really how it is, man. Like, guys, like, don't think about the the human side of the athlete. They kind of – they separate the two. They kind of dehumanize them. And so um, – uh, not to get into the heavy stuff, but, you know, I, I, I was in a unique position this past season – when I um when I lost a teammate, so I I lost a teammate. For those who don't know, he passed away in a uh, tragic car accident uh, on Christmas Eve, and so uh it it was it was tough, definitely. I, like man, one probably one like maybe the toughest thing I ever went through in my life, because mm-hmm. at the time that it happened, you know, we had played our last game, uh. I want to say December 10th. No, no, no. It had to be later than that. Either way, we played our last game uh, before the Christmas break. We won. We beat the number 10 team in the nation in Augusta, Augusta State. Beat them. And we ride high. You know, we feeling good. We beat this big, we know this really good team, all that stuff. Me and him and a couple of my other teammates, we all went out to eat right after. Everything. Had a good time. And, you know, great, like, living. You know how it is when you win. Go out, celebrate. And then I, I went home for Christmas break the next day. So that was the last time I saw him. And, uh, you know, got the news on Christmas Eve. And uh, my our coaches got on the Zoom with us and told us what happened. And it was one of the things that you just couldn't believe. Like, no way this is really – this is real life. You know, it, did, it just didn't seem real. But – <clears throat> you know, the hardest part about it is when we came back. Because, you know, I'm at home right now, so I'm kind of away from the situation. Like, I know what happened, but, like, you know, it just ain't hit me yet. But then we come back, and he really not there. And it's like every day for a while, I feel like somebody missed. Every day. Mm. We, we came together that first day, and we had, like, a whole, like, team meeting. They brought people in and talked to us, all that. Very emotional, whatever. And uh, it just was tough, and you know we had to, you know we we had to get back to practicing because you know season goes on. But like, like I said, every day for a while, I feel like somebody was missing. It's like, man, what? Like, it's like this, this big personality was gone from the team, and so uh, I remember those next that first game we played back from Christmas. Uh, the first game we played was against Flagler, another good team in our conference, the team that actually won the championship the year before, so it was a good team. We, they was our first matchup at, after that, after, uh, I mean, coming back from Christmas. So it was our first game without them. And I remember Flagler was very, like, very, you know, sympathetic with us. They gave us these shirts that had his number on it and stuff. Like, they wore them for warm-ups and stuff. And then they gave it. They gave them to us. Very nice gesture. Everything like all of it was so nice. It was very you know emotional. But uh, I remember that game. Like it was yesterday, one of the strangest games I've ever played. Like I don't think there's another way to describe it. It was one of the strangest games I've ever played because 
it was like for a while in the game, we it was like we was just playing. Like there was no rhyme or reason. It was like it was like we was just going. Both teams, like it's weird because it was like both teams were doing it. It was like we was both kind of like on I don't even know how to describe it. We just was going. Like no plays, no nothing. Like we just was running up and down, up and down, up and down. And then like we kind of got it, like we got to like the first media or whatever, media timeout. And like the game kind of calmed down for us. Like, but you could kind of look around at guys and see, like, you know how you can look at a guy that's hooping and like I and his eyes are big and it's like <sighs> like you could tell like he not really like locked in, like mm-hmm. you know, but that was all of us. All of us was like that. And so that first media kind of got us calmed down. Because Coach even said, like, everybody, he's like, guys, calm down. We playing too fast, this and this and this. Let's settle down, whatever. It was a strange feeling. But uh, the rest of that season, it took a while to kind of not even fully get over it. Like, I, ain't, I don't even want to say get over it. Like, it took a while to, like, get back to, like, business. Like, yeah. play, playing, playing without him and, like, him not being there and getting used to it, it took a long time. And, like, that was one of the harder things I've ever had to deal with as a player. And people around us were sympathetic and stuff, you know. They, you know, they said a lot of stuff about it. They're like, hey, man, I'm sorry. I heard what happened, this and this and this. You know how it is. But it's one of the things, like, man, you you, you know, you get out there, you, just, you still got to play. You still got to play. And so – um, I was very proud of our team for the way what we still accomplished without him and like and the adversity that we went through because we still end up winning 20 games. My coach said best. He said, y'all, I'm proud of y'all because y'all end up winning 20 games, making the playoffs, making it again and messed around and got an at-large bid for the NCAA tournament. Y'all won 20 games, but y'all very easily could have been for y'all went y'all were 20 and 10, but y'all very easily could have been 10 and 20 or 12 mm-hmm. and 18. Like y'all, I mean, or yeah, y'all very easily could have slipped and went the opposite direction, but y'all came together and y'all, y'all kept going and y'all kept pushing and y'all accomplished something. And so, you know, it was one of those things like it's hard, but like this is something we're gonna do for him. And so that kept me pushing, that kept me going, like, nah, like it's hard, but he wouldn't want us to be, you know. Sad. He wouldn't want us to slip and let the season be a waste. Like he would want us to accomplish something. So I'm glad we got to do that for him. And, but basketball and my like fr- friends around me and family that could take my mind off of things and you know having a team with me that we was all going through the same thing that made it easier. But like we all fought our own individual battles and everything. So I know what it's like to be going through something and still have to play, still be expected. Mm-hmm. Or not just play but perform, which is two different yeah. things. So it, it's hard, man. It's hard. You never really know until you're in that situation, but it's hard. And you just kind of find your way of not getting too low, like I said at the beginning. That's the main thing you can say. And talk to people. We as a team talk many times, talk to each other as a group, like individually. You know, you can talk, come, you pull guys to the side, like, you know, like this guy, like, him, him, and uh, him and Aunt very close. I'm gonna talk to him. Make sure he good regularly. Like, cause you know, some guys closer with him than others. But like, we all in it together, and that made it a little easier. So, uh, my advice to people or athletes. Let me speak to athletes in general. When things are going on in your life between you and your family, whether it be your family, uh, losing a loved one, you know, things ain't going right off the court in any kind of way or aspect. I would suggest you speak to somebody. And I ain't saying you got to go to a therapist. I would not. I mean, I ain't saying don't because that's a very, you know, helpful way of dealing with things also. But you ain't got to do that. At least at, at least have your friend, a girlfriend, your mother, your father, brother, sister, have you somebody you can talk to. And I know it's hard sometimes to talk about things that bother us or that really like make us sad or mad or like mm-hmm. or really bothering us in, like internally. But have you at least one person in this world you can do that with? Even if it do it do does mean you get a therapist or something of that nature. Find you somebody. Like it, I promise you it'll help you. Because it helped me knowing that I had teammates going through this and I could talk to them. Mm-hmm. 
And like then day, if we cry, we we both in here crying. We crying together. That made it easier, cause it's like my brother right next to me, he crying too. And like mm-hmm. there's something like comforting in that fact. Like, yeah, like it's sad and I'm crying, but hey, he crying right next to me. We in it yeah. together. We gonna get through it together. So have you somebody that'll cry next to you? Is my advice. You know, talk to somebody. Have a friend next to you. It'll make it easier for you. Because if you're an athlete, games ain't going to stop coming. There's still going to be games. There's still going to be practices, all that. So you got to, you know, it's one of the things you got to just be ready for. You got to get, you got to, you know, prepare for the next one. But that that is something that will definitely help you. Pray about it. Talk to somebody about it. And, you know, never get, you'll never get too low. So that would be my advice to, to athletes out there listening to this, that, you know, if you that will be going through something. Because you're going to go through something. That's my advice to y'all. So mental toughness is one of the biggest things that I know pretty much every coach preaches to the players. And also one of the biggest factors in a player's game is the mental toughness. So um, I know that a lot of coaches wish their players would be mentally tougher and they struggle with teaching them and understanding you know, what mental toughness is to apply it to the game. So to help you guys out, I wrote a whole ebook breaking down what mental toughness is, different factors that make up what mental toughness is, and uh, different ways that you can apply it to your life and your game because it's a good blend of uh, the player and the person of how both sides of you can grow in your mental toughness. So I wrote I broke it down in an ebook, the Mental Toughness Playbook. The whole ebook is about fifty pages, a little less than fifty pages. Easy to read. A simple breakdown of what mental toughness is, different factors and different areas in it that impact your mental toughness, and uh, how you can grow and develop in there. So if you look interested in it. It's in the uh, description below. So go ahead and look in the, uh, hit that link and invest into yourself by investing into your mindset and mental toughness. Because I personally believe that um, your your brain and your mind is so much powerful than you give it credit. So invest into your mindset and then your body will follow afterwards. So the mental toughness playbook, get the ebook below. Uh, if you tune into it, thank you. I appreciate it. If not, it's fine. Get back to the rest of the episode. See you later. Yeah, I co-sign that, bro. Um, Cause I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm not, I'm not an athlete, obviously, but within my life, I'm really like, I'm literally like just now this year, really starting to like emphasize and like being more intentional about who I have around. Like, first off, being being more inclusive and being more in the right circles and being more in the right groups, having right people around me. But also too, like being having partnerships and getting in groups and stuff because I'm kind of a loner, you know. I kind of I'm kind of a you know a distant person and to my own extent. And um, you know, me personally, I don't like I said before, if I was in Isaiah Thomas situation, when nobody know what I'm dealing with, and I kind of close off and shut down sometimes. When sometimes it's not intentional, and that's just how I am. Like I'm an introvert, so I'm just kind of like to myself and. I'm learning the power of opening up and talking through things because um, not just on a negative sense, but like sometimes I have an idea about stuff and I think it's a 10. Oh, that's a dope idea. Oh, that's amazing. But I've learned, like I got two people I always shoot stuff to like one guy, he helps like add so much more color and make it bigger and better. I'm like, dang, that's a, dang, that's now compared to what he had me thinking, I like dang it. I, I, I had a six. He made it to a ten. Like dang, bro. <laughs> then I got my brother. I always throw stuff too. He helped me like put more logic and like concrete facts to it. Make sure I'm like practical about the idea. Like dang, that was a five idea. But he pushed it to a ten because he helped me like figure out how to execute and how to like real lock in on it. And so, uh, the power of having right people around you and stuff like this part. This podcast is a partnership because. Uh, I didn't want to, I didn't want to go through that burden of trying to figure this out and do everything alone. You know what I mean? So I had to have somebody to bounce off with. Cause I don't know. A, I didn't know a whole lot about podcasting. I could have figured out, I could have done it. And you know, I don't know what the outcome would have been. Like I, I'm a person like, I get it done or I get it done. It doesn't matter. It don't phase me, but I know it's a better product because you the level of value that you bring to it. And so, um, it's kind of get back on topic now. It's like, to like you said, to have community around you and people around you 
that can understand and you know empathize or sympathize or sympathize with what you're going through means a lot even like you said it's not something as far not necessarily drastic but to that extent of a therapist but having a, a home girl around you like we talked about earlier the power of women having the right woman around your home girl or a girlfriend a mom or a sister that you can just be like man this is what i got going on uh having teammates that you can open up to having a, a home boy that you can hey bro this what's going on because nine times out of ten there's a good chance somebody else has going through has gone through that or is going through that that or just maybe to understand and sympathize with you like man i feel you i understand sometimes that's all you need so I'm really realizing like the power of community and like the people that you have around you and um to really lean into that because like the issue a lot of stuff is that we especially as men, especially as black men, we do a lot of stuff alone. Mm. And so that's just a whole nother topic. That's a whole nother episode for real, for real. But uh yeah, just make sure you, you, you can figure out somebody to have around you that you can lean into and uh rely on because that's that's not something that you want to deal with on alone on all alone all the time. You know, that there are pockets where you have to deal with stuff on your own, but you don't want to make that a 24-7 thing. So yeah, I got a co sign what you said, man. Appreciate that, brother. Uh, it's just um carrying the weight alone, like carrying you know, let me put it to you like this. Carrying too much weight alone can crush you. But mm-hmm. if you got somebody to help you carry, you're gonna be all right. So I just I just encourage y'all to have you somebody that you can help carry that weight with, and that's just it, man. Like I, I've been a player, I've been going through things. I lost family members. I didn't, uh, you know, I, like I said, I lost a teammate this past season. Uh, at a year in JUCO, my grandfather got sick, and my, uh, my auntie messed around and told me right before the game, and then we played the game. We won. I kind of performed all right, you know, but I was thinking about it. Then my dad had called me after the game and told me. And um, he told me my, uh, about my grandfather. He said, uh, I ain't want to tell you before the game because I ain't want to, you know, throw you off. I knew you had a game today. He didn't know my auntie had already told me. My auntie had already spilled the things. <laughs> so, you know, I've been through some things as a player, but, you know, it helps, like I said, it helps to talk about those things. That conversation my daddy did help me, though. Like, because he, he was telling me, like, yeah, things going to be okay. We don't think nothing serious is going to happen. We just want to let you know, you know, he he not the best right now, this and this and this. So I don't want you to be too worried. And that put my mind at ease hearing that part. So that, that helped me still. So, like I said, man, have you somebody you can talk to, whoever it may be. Don't be scared to talk to somebody. You know, just have you somebody in your corner. Somebody in your corner is like you, it cannot be underestimated. Mm-hmm. The power of that cannot be underestimated. So just have you somebody, man. That's the main thing. Yeah. But um is there anything else you want to touch on, my boy? Um man. It's a it's a lot of races we can go or could go. Um the one thing I will say that I think about right now, man, we are at the best of times. And at the worst of times when it comes to mental health, um, especially when we talk about like celebrity and public figures, because mm-hmm. this is as open as and as acceptable to cover, even just having a conversation like for us to have this conversation right now. We haven't even talked about really getting any steps done, but just have the conversation about it and around it. It's acceptable now. Like that's just we just we we like even like in the door we like just in the garage like in the garage like in a driveway when it comes to the conversation about mental health like we just got on a property like that's the farthest we've come when it comes to that so like we just now accepting this level of that we having a conversation around it and it's more acceptable um and this is the highest point that we've been at this time when it comes to that but I say it's the worst of times too because uh for the average person or the average athlete, social media is everywhere. And so uh, it's a saying that thief is the, uh, you know, comparison is the thief's joy. There you go. So when you feel like you're not doing enough or you're not good enough, that's coming from social media a lot of times. Or you feel like 
I mean, I'm playing, I'm doing pretty well, but I ain't ranked this high or I ain't ranked that high or this player over there is doing that. You know what I mean? And when it comes to, you know, the high level athletes, you know, uh, it's the worst of times for them because this is the most open access that we've had to celebrities at all time. Mm-hmm. It's like kind of a conversation we had earlier to where expectations and what we want from these players are that hasn't changed since the beginning of sports. Like we still expect players to be great. It's, it's never going to change. But now we get to see more of your personal life too. And we're holding to this high pedestal. I think the pedestal of being a public figure is higher, but that's not as good. You know what I mean? Because you still have to deal with personal life too. Like before you were able to be like, I'm celebrity and now I'm human. I'm celebrity and now I'm dad. I'm celebrity and I'm mom. And now you 24 seven camera in your face, 24 seven had to be LeBron James. Like there's this video of him at summer league, bro. That just really, it bothered me, man. Like, he was literally just sitting baseline, courtside. Him, uh, Rich Paul, and Damon Jones. They just chilling watching the game, bro. So, but we see, like, bro, it really it messed my mind up, bro. What we see on TV is just, like, we see LeBron, like, camera, like, it's like, all right, cool, LeBron James. Somebody was behind him and recorded that jump. He had at least 10 people in front of him with, like, video phones and, like, camera, actual, like, TV cameras. So just all around him. He just, like, he... I don't even think he could see the game or like the woman's at that point. He's like, sit up just like this. He had to act like it was normal, bro. Like that, that messed my mind up to be like, bro, this man can't even like enjoy the summer league game and like not be LeBron James for like two hours. You know what I mean? That kind of bothered me. Like somebody came and dapped him up. That's probably the most human he had from that experience right there. But just like, he been dealing with that for six since 16. Like that just bothered me, man. Like this man can't even go to a summer league game take this hat off of being the public figure LeBron James and just like be a fan for a second. You know what I mean? That's just weird. And um, it's just, it's just, it's just weird to me, man. Cause I never, I never thought that it was so many, I thought it was like maybe two or three cameras sitting right there. It's kind of like ESPN, this local paper and maybe somebody else. All right, cool. No, but this dude had at least 10 people around him. I'm just like, it was my mind up seeing that jump, bro. So it's yeah. the best of times and worst of times when it comes to mental health, bro. Cause uh, you got you got the social media slandering of cupcake and uh pandemic p and all this other stuff going on and you know athletes you I'm not, I'm not ranked yet i ain't got so many scholarships yet i ain't got all these things yet because i'm, I'm glued to this phone but on the flip end of it i can live on youtube university or google university and figure out how to cope and deal with stuff it's more acceptable to talk about it if you know somebody came out and had the conversation now like DeMar Rosen did and Kevin Love did, you get so much more love than you would hate and just be like, you know, you you soft or you weak because you're talking about mental health or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I'm not sitting here mad at anybody if they don't open up about it because I understand, bro. It's, it's not the easiest thing to just talk about your mental health situation because everybody's upbringing and, and the situation that they're dealing with is different. So I'm not mad if somebody does, doesn't come out public about it. I don't mind if somebody does. I'm not saying you have to. You feel me? It's just like, Whatever you feel like works for you, works for you. So um, I think about that sometimes, man. Well, well, we're at the best of times and the worst of times when it comes to mental health and pretty much a lot of stuff in life, man, because this is the most acceptable we've had this conversation. But on the other end of it, this is the most, uh, it's probably the most damaging part of our mental health too, man. So we just, like you said before, just make sure you, you, you're, intentionally being kind to people and just making sure you treat people right man because you never fully know or what people are dealing with they got going on and try to be respectful of another human being because at the end of the day that's what we all are we're just another human trying to do the best we can man so show love bro it all comes down to just showing love man because you never know but, right. yeah man that's Man, let that let that be let that be something y'all take away from the podcast man like please if you ain't hear nothing else we see it just be kind to other people, man. Show love to other people. I, I, I take that with me, man. I show love because, like, like I never know what that person dealing with. And I always want people to look at me like, like okay, he he always been nice to me. He has always been, you know, a friendly, a friendly face to me. I try to show that to people, even if I don't always feel like it. 
And so, like, people don't be knowing that I'm going through something a lot of times because, like, even when I'm going through something, I don't want to let that be projected onto other people. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes I couldn't help it. Like I said, you know, earlier with the games and stuff, like, you know, it, it got to be a lot to me, so I couldn't help it at certain points. But, like, if I, if it, like, if I can handle it, you know, and nine times out of ten, I can, or I hope I can at least. I, I'm handling it to the best of my ability. Let me say that. I don't want to project that on other people. So even when I'm going through something, I'm going to show love to that person to the person next to me, the people that come into contact with me. So they know, like, hey, yeah, I'm going through something, but you might be going through something. We good, you know? And so that's all it is, man. So I hope y'all take that with y'all, man. Like, be kind to other people. Be kind to public figures. Be kind to athletes. Like, be kind to that guy that even though he might not have won you that money, you know, he didn't have, he didn't, he didn't get over 30. Like, he didn't get over eight or six. You, didn't, you know, I understand. I understand. But still, man, you know. That's a that's a person. That's a human. I just you know, be, just show love, man, the best you can. And that's about all I got to say on it, man. Like I've been, I'm the player. That, that you talk to a guy that, that you know work with players, that coach players, that train players. So if we can agree on this, like please <laughs> take our word for it. I promise you. But uh, that's really all I got to say, man. Uh, Anything else you want to throw out there before we get out of here, man? We might do another episode on, like, coping or, like, that could be a whole other episode in itself. Like, how I cope with things, how you cope with things, what we tell other players. That might need to be a whole other episode in itself. Man, it's my mom. My mom. You know, this is my pocket, what I do, bro. So, I just, I'm trying to, to, like, not go too long on stuff and trying to condense it and keep it on target of what we're trying to go to. Um, cause you say something, my mind go here. My, you say something else, my mind go there. So, uh, I just finish on that, man. Just, just walking. Uh, it sounds like a part man. two to me. <laughs> yeah, man, it might have to be, bro. Uh, cause I we can go pro, we can go us, we can go, man. It's so many different levels we can go, man. But kids, um, everything. My mind, bro. My mind flipped to all the different. So, like how players, I don't think parents understand how players got to deal with stuff like the the mental health of like young, like youth, like high school and lower. Like I think about this stuff on a daily, bro, man. So we have to do like a part two. Knowing me, it could really be like a part five. Like we can go <laughs> that long into it, but that's my mind. But, but we're going to end this right here. Um, I'll just say, man, uh, it always show love and respect, man. Cause you never fully know, man. And uh, the worst case scenario, man, just, I don't even want to say treat people the way they want to, you want to do them. Don't treat people the way you want to be treated. Treat people the way that they want to be treated and at the same time how God wants us to treat them. Because sometimes we get out of line with... Just because I want to be treated a certain way doesn't mean I should be treated that way. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. That sounds weird. It's kind of against what a lot of people say, but like... I'm trying to... I ain't finna preach nothing like that. That ain't, that ain't my pocket, you know. But... Mm-hmm. Uh, Open the Bible a little bit and see what God to say about love. You know what I mean? Because honestly, bro, like I try to love people how God loves us. You know what I mean? Like um, that's honestly what I try to do, man. I try to be as understanding as I can, as forgiving as I can, like be as patient as I can. But at the same time, I'm human. I got I got my my pressure points where it's just like, yo, I'm finna snap and go off because. Like you, like you had your pocket where, like, man, we lost eight straight games. My patient ain't the same right now. I'm finna just spaz out in a minute, you know. But I feel like I'm very understanding and I'm pretty patient and all that stuff, man. So um, just try to just try to extend it out to other people because you never fully know, man. Like you, I promise you, you never know, man. Like folks, be smiling in your face, but then go home and be crying out alone, bro. Like I got people who's told me some stuff, bro. Like their stories are, are it'll amaze you. Of the stuff they deal with, man. So, just try to show love, man, and uh, be respectful. If you can do those two things, man, I just feel like you can't really mess up with that, man. Um, show love and always walk in respect, bro. So that'll that'll probably be a big cure of a lot of people' mental health. Like, so if like, bro, think about it. If you walk up every day and you feel loved and respected. You know what I mean? Like, if you if you really sit down and just be like, bro, I woke up this morning and I actually feel loved. And there's so many things that go under feeling love. I mean, I feel understood. I feel heard. I felt... Um, 
wanted, listen to, me. I feel wanted. And you respect me, bro. I feel like I feel the loyalty. Like it's so many things that go under both of those. It's just like you can't really lose in life, bro. You know what I mean? Like it's hard. It's really hard for you to have a downtime, man. Like, and uh, oh, psh, I can't forget about this, man. Uh, gratitude, man. Like when you walk in, like the humility of, of gratitude. Like there's so many times where I be pissed off about stuff, man. Just stuff don't go the way I wanted to happen, and whatever. And it's just like. I, I I'm trying I'm doing I'm trying I'm doing a better job of intentionally focusing on gratitude like thinking thinking and figure out how can I be more grateful of what I have and what I'm trying to go what I'm getting to like what I have right now just walking in gratitude man so that's a big thing bro like that's that's a a major thing for me man like walking in gratitude a lot more so um uh, like just just show love and respect man and internalize being more grateful and showing gratitude, man, and just appreciation for stuff. Cause like it's it's a lot that goes into those things. So if you can really lock down on those three things, man, like that'll cure a lot of our problems, bro. Uh, like the whole I'm telling you, bro, like mental health would be a different conversation. That's what we kind of focused on more, man. But yeah, I'm gonna just cut it off right there. I'm not done, but I'm finished. So <laughs> <laughs> hey, I understand, brother. Hey, y'all let us know, man. If y'all want to hear part two, like, I think we got a lot more to speak on, obviously. But, you know, we don't want to hold y'all up too long. We know y'all yeah, got yeah. things to do with people to seek, obviously. But yeah. either way, man, like we said, I hope y'all got something out of this, bro. Please, I hope so. Like, they can make the world a better place. But yeah. uh, that'll do it for another episode of the Beatball Jones podcast, man. We hope y'all enjoyed it. We thank y'all for listening. Uh, please check us out again next week. We might just be doing this again. Might be having the same talk, you know, just in a different direction. So <laughs> y'all be sure to join us again next week, man. Be sure to like, subscribe, and, you know, hop in the comments. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you should have a part two or what direction should we go in next or something else you would like to hear us speak on. And, uh, we, we, you know, we always leave in the comments, but it would be greatly appreciated. But either way, man. Please be sure to follow Brian on all social medias at Bball Jones. That's Bball Jones on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and on TikTok. So y'all be sure to go give me a follow over there. And then you can follow me on Twitter at NellieH34 at Nelson Diaspin on IG and Nelson Asking on Facebook. And uh, be sure to follow the podcast on TikTok as well. Uh, the Bball Jones podcast is on TikTok. Be sure to follow us over there. We got a couple videos up. Go ahead and like those up for us, man. We greatly appreciate it. But with that being said, man, uh, that does it for another episode. We appreciate y'all once again. And without further ado, we out. Shalom. <laughs> <laughs>